Hello, everybody. James Miracle here once again for a uh, 20 to 25 minute tutorial on Diamond System Builder and the area manager for Mitsubishi covering Eastern and Central PA, along with my counterpart Jeff France covering uh, Southeastern PA, Jersey, and Delaware. Diamond System Builder, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of this program, has been out for a number of years and it is an all encompassing design software program that we've had available. Uh, primarily for the City Multi crew up until a few years ago, and we incorporated M&P series product uh, to make life a little easier for uh, contractors that get into both sides of the equation. So residentially speaking, guys, uh, in 2018 and going forward, Diamond System Builder is going to be your design software of choice. Uh, it's very thorough, all-encompassing design software and proposal software that you can incorporate into your existing proposal. Um, and come out with a pretty nifty uh, finished product to present to a homeowner out in the field. So what are we going to talk about today? Diamond System Builder, how to download, uh, very briefly, how to download the software. It is software based, so you'll be pulling it off of MyLink Drive. The download procedure takes about five to 10 minutes and then you're off and running. So once we uh, identify how to download, We'll teach you how to navigate the site. Um, very briefly, we're going to run through some slides on just an overview of DSB, and then we'll go live in DSB to show you guys how to truly navigate the system. We'll uh, come up with a mock design. So why use DSB? Uh, Diamond System Builder, uh, again, has been out for a number of years. For our commercial side uh, products, uh, you had the ability to integrate AutoCAD schematics, equipment schedules through Excel, um, design specific submittal projects um, into the system. Uh, but more often than not, this program, residentially speaking, for Pierce Phelps and Pierce Phelps contractors, uh, M&P product, much like the uh, MXZ design tool, which is spreadsheet based, this will be all encompassing and has a few additional advantages and features that that design tool uh, had that you're familiar with. Uh, sensible latent and total capacities, for instance, that latent capacity was not available on the MXZ design tool. Uh, it is an implied feature on DSB, meaning when you subtract the sensible capacity from your total capacity, you will have your specific latent capacity, which you will need to accurately design for AC. Uh, you'll be able to incorporate specific piping links, and you'll get capacity D-rate factors, just like the MXZ design tool. Uh, this program will tell you what your indoor unit connected capacity looks like based on the equipment you've selected. It will identify what your estimated supply air temperatures are based off the bin data that you've identified in specific location that you've identified for your load calcs. Um, we have bin data for every area of the country and specific to Pennsylvania, in our neck of the woods, Scranton, Harrisburg, State College, Philadelphia, you name it, we have it in there so you can accurately come up with your design conditions of your choice. Uh, by and large, if you're not happy with the design conditions based on any one given location, you can also manually adjust them. We'll show you how to do that as well. So in terms of downloading the program, you'll log on to MyLink Drive, which is everybody should be familiar with at this point. Uh, you'll go in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a, a section that says software. You'll click on software and then once you get to that page, middle down the road, you'll see something that looks like this. It'll say Diamond System Builder, uh, 2013 to current. You'll hit click on the icon that says Diamond System Builder right here, and then you'll follow the prompts. It'll ask you to run or save the program. You're going to run the program. It'll ask for specific contact information for you as the individual, um, and you'll plug in all that information. You'll have a specific username and password that you'll create, and then you'll have a desktop icon along with a DSB folder in your document section where all of your uh, designs that you create will then be saved going forward for future reference. In terms of the interface itself, once you click on the DSB icon on your desktop, you'll get into this home screen here. And there is, uh, for future reference, guys, if you have any questions on DSV that you want to find out for yourself, right on that home page, there is an area where you can pull up the DSB handbook, 
which is a user's guide on how to navigate the site uh, going forward for you. Again, once you're in to the design program and you begin designing, uh, you'll have access to choose from uh, various outdoor units and multiple product families. Uh, in this particular instance, we're focused on M&P series, but the entire product line is loaded into uh, this DSP software. And then you'll start with your outdoor unit, rotate into a branch box if applicable, and then finally finish off with your indoor units as well as the control options or accessory options that you want to integrate into DSB as well. There are various areas which provide specific information based off of your design. The lower right-hand corner of your screen, once you're in the design program, will provide you with multiple uh, design characteristics of your uh, design or your equipment. You'll have uh, correction factors, you'll have outdoor unit capacities, you'll have your specific line links, total line link versus available line link, you'll have additional refrigerant requirements, everything you had on design tool, the MXZ design tool, you'll have that and more on DSB in that lower right hand corner. The upper right hand corner will be your uh, indoor units or your branch box choices, right? You'll have a three port or five port branch box. You'll be able to split in the event you're using multiple branch boxes. And then any indoor units that are applicable to the outdoor unit you selected will be listed in that upper right hand corner in the box that's highlighted here. For any zone, assuming you have a multi zone system that you're not utilizing, you will have to end cap. And if you can see it, guys, it's right at the bottom of the list. You'll click and drag that end cap into the design, and that's to assume that those uh, specific ports off the branch box or the outdoor unit are inoperable. So any indoor unit or accessory that you want to click on, you'll click and drag over, and I'll show you that here in a second once we get into the live demo. You will also have an availability of a controls view, which will then be able, you'll be able to link up specific controls and accessories to the indoor units you select. For instance, if you want an MVZ air handler and you want to incorporate an MHK1 control into that MVZ air handler, under controls view, you will have that capability. So the net result here, guys, is when you finalize your design and you want to print off either a spreadsheet or a PDF copy of your design, you'll have an itemized list of every piece of equipment, control, and accessory that you've selected in your design, which you then can then forward uh, as a contractor, you can forward to your local Pierce Phelps uh, branch inside contact or TM. And as a distributor, inside salesperson, uh, you'll be able to confirm with the contractor specifically what he or she is looking to do from a design standpoint and then itemize the list of equipment and accessory controls that you're looking to incorporate into that final uh, invoice. Controls view looks like this, and again, click and drag or double click will integrate into groups, a group, an individual unit, or multiple groups, should you want to use multiple MHK1s or Kumo Cloud interfaces, what have you, for any one of our units. All right, so real quick, guys, we're going to go and do a DSB design. So right now, we are up and running, assuming I have clicked on the DSB icon on our desktop. At any point in time, guys, I want to make you guys aware that you can update DSB at your leisure. If there are any updates that were provided from our corporate headquarters, it will be available for uh, your reference. Just by clicking Update DSB, you will have the updated version uh, at any one point in time. So that might be one of those, every time you open DSB up, you click update to make sure everything's up to date. Uh, you don't have to wait for myself, Jeff, or your uh, local Pierce TM for an updated MXZ design tool going forward. It's all at your fingertips here. Now, if you want to open up an existing project, you click open. That'll open up your file folder and any designs that you've done for the life of the time you've been logged into DSB, uh, will you have access to. For all intents and purposes, we're going to click on new and start a new project. The 
first thing that we're going to do here is plug in the project properties. That includes the customer name, comment section, the originator, uh, the unit configuration, the design conditions. In other words, where are we physically located and what are heating and cooling design temps, outdoor design temps. Uh, and then in the event you want to plug in an extended warranty, we have that capability as well. Whenever making changes to the project property section, I want to make you guys aware you have to click apply for those changes to take place. Okay? Apply after any time you make changes here in each one of these tabs to make sure the project properties are being updated. Okay? So project info, you got to you got to you guys got the gist here. 60 hertz, 410A, you don't have to touch anything in this zone with the exception of maybe the customer name in the comment section if you choose. Unit configuration, uh, residentially speaking as well, you will not have to change anything on this tab. The outdoor unit capacity is always going to be 100%, and the max connected capacity is 130% uh, in the event you're using a multi-zone uh, system of ours. So that's already set for you. And obviously, we want full demand characteristics or capacities to be listed on the design. Uh, D rates at 100% as well, right? So you don't have to touch anything in this section, residentially speaking. We'll rotate over to design conditions. This is where, uh, or section where you're going to have to make some changes. So location, so I operate out of the Lehigh Valley, and assuming I wanted a design in that area, I'd click on Pennsylvania as a state and Allentown will be the closest city to the Lehigh Valley. So what this is telling you is your outdoor air temperatures based on your design, heating would be four degrees, cooling would be 92 degrees. So those are your two design, outdoor design temperatures that we're working off of. Your indoor temperatures are also listed here. And again, once you select Allentown, you can manually make changes to these as well. So if you didn't want your indoor space temperature to be 80 degrees, which is our default setting, you can change that to 75 at your leisure. I'm going to keep everything as is for Allentown. So I'm going to click on apply and then hit OK. And that's going to save all of my project properties going forward. The next step would be to select the system and the outdoor unit specifically that we're looking to hook up here. So if it's a single zone M series, we'd click on M and S series. If it would be a single zone P series, we'd click on P. I'm going to go for the gusto here and select an MXZ, which would be a multi-zone system of ours, and click OK. So now we're creating a centralized system. You can label this system whatever you want just by clicking on System 1 and naming it. First things first, we're going to select our outdoor unit. So a Best Buy or a common outdoor unit for us in a multi-zone is a 4C36 NAHZ. It just happens to be a branch box hyperheat unit. So there's our outdoor unit. We're going to select our main unit height. This is a reference height, guys, of where your outdoor unit is. If there is a basement and we're plugging in any indoor units in the basement, or let's say the branch box, for instance, your basement would be zero. So then you work up from there. Uh, assuming we're slab on grade, right, our main unit height would be zero. So I'm going to plug in zero here. If it was a basement, maybe this would be eight or ten foot for frame of reference. Okay. Advanced, if we had the serial number of our outdoor unit already, we could plug in there. If we wanted to make any adjustments to our design conditions, we could do so as well. Um, and last but not least, any type of accessories that Mitsubishi offers in a stock at your local Pierce Phelps, uh, you can plug in a quantity for accessories, such as ball valve adapters, port adapters, air outlet guides, drain pan sockets, heaters, you name it, it'll be listed here. In the event you want a submittal of the equipment, you've got two choices. The easier of the two choices would be to click on unit data PDF, in which case we'll download the submittal for the unit that you have or you're working on in question. In this case, it would be the outdoor 4C36 hyperheat unit. You also can obviously reference my link drive. This is the lesser of two evils. Click OK. And now we have our outdoor unit populated. Okay. We have nothing else in here. We know the 4C36 hyperheat unit to branch box model. So that's going to be our next equipment choice. All right, so we have a three port and a five port branch box model available for choice. Let's assume we're doing four indoor units. 
and we'll have four zones. So we're going to take a five port branch box, click and drag into the box, and then you can select from either that three or five port branch box. We'll keep it at five, and now we're going to start incorporating some piping links. Okay, so the outdoor unit to the branch box, let's say, is 15 foot. 15 foot. Number of bends. Uh, I, for number of bends, guys, sometimes it's unknown. Typically, anywhere between three and four will be worst case scenario. You can always plug that in, uh, just an FYI. Unit height, let's say the branch box is at the same height as the outdoor unit, maybe a little bit higher. We put three feet, click OK. Now we have our line set size from the outdoor unit to the branch box listed, as well as the length and foot that we incorporated as well, 15 foot. We don't have any capacities listed because we don't have any indoor units listed. So our next step would be to click and drag, let's say an MVZ air hammer over, okay? I'm gonna plug in a 18, MVZ 18,000 BTU high static air hammer, and then I'm gonna incorporate the piping link. From the branch box, it's minimal, let's say it's 15 foot. Again, we got a couple bends in there, and then our unit height is same level or just above the outdoor unit. If you want to label any of your rooms and make it personalized, Jane's bedroom, we can do that. Okay. Advanced and accessory features are still applicable to any of these indoor units as well. So if you have a condensate pump, like a blue diamond pump you want to incorporate, you can do so. If you need a PDF copy or submittal of the air handler to get dimensional info, you can click on unit data PDF and get it right there. You click OK, and now we have the air handler listed as an indoor uh, incorporated option. We've got capacities listed, and just to point out, guys, we have heating capacity, which is your total heating capacity, a little over 19,000 right now because we only have an air handler listed. We've got our total capacity in cooling, and we have our sensible capacity in cooling as well. The difference between your sensible and your total capacity, sensible capa or total cooling capacity, would be your latent cooling capacity or moisture removal capabilities. Something to keep in mind there, it's something the MXE design tool does not have currently and will never have. Our two other zones, let's say, are upstairs, two-story Cape Cod, and we want to put a couple GLO6s in. Right, so we're going to pick our indoor unit. Same deal here as the MVZ, a little bit longer line set length, maybe 25 foot from the branch box, a couple bends, and that's 15 foot up in the air. We're going to label the room. Little Johnny's bedroom. And click OK. So as you can see, as you start incorporating more indoor units, the connected capacities and your uh, capacities per indoor unit adjust accordingly, right? So we'll finish off with one more indoor unit. You have two options here. You can click and drag if it's the same indoor unit, or you can click and drag over from your selection box. So we're going to keep that as is, and let's assume for a second this is our design. This is what we're looking to do here. We've got quarter half connections for the 18, the 15 foot line set, and we've got 3 8 quarter inch for your two GL06s. As I mentioned earlier, if we have inoperable zones here, we're going to want to end cap those. So we're going to click and drag on end cap. We're going to blank them off, and maybe we're saving that for future expansion of the system, which would be perfectly acceptable. But for this design, the way it's operating now, we're essentially done with the equipment selection. Our next step would be control options, which would be in the controls view, right? And we're okay with a handheld remote that comes standard with the GL wall mount units. What we need is a control option for the MVZ air handler. So simply put, guys, we're going to add an MHK1, double click that. We're going to assign the MHK1 to group one, which as you can see is that MVZ air handler. We're going to click OK. And now we've incorporated an MHK1 for the air handler design. That's it for our controls. We've got a piping view, equipment view, and a ventilation view. In the event you wanted to hook up a Lossnate URV bars, you could do so as well.
Going back to the design view, I just want to make you guys aware of what we're looking at over in the lower right-hand corner. Again, the indoor units, total capacity and available capacity, the total piping length. In this system, we have 492 foot of total pipe length available. We're only utilizing 80 total foot, so we're well within range. Correction factors or your D rates based off of your piping lengths, your defrost, uh, your total D rates, your additional refrigerant requirements critical, guys. The charge has to be within an ounce or two, and when you get into a branch box model, typically you're charging uh, anywhere from 6 to 13 pounds of additional refrigerant. In this case, it's 6.9 pounds. That's weighed in, and you're good to go. Your design conditions are all listed here. Cooling, indoor and outdoor, heating indoor and outdoor, relative humidity, the whole nine. So everything's done. Uh, for all intents and purposes, our proposal is complete. Now we need to either print this off via PDF or spreadsheet. To do so, we're going to go to export, and we can export a PDF, or as I like to do, export into a Excel spreadsheet form. And you can select specific pieces of information you want listed on the report. I typically hit select all. Uh, maybe minus ventilation if you want to uh, avoid that. That's fine. You click OK, and then you're going to have to save the file. This will go into your DSB uh, file for future reference. Okay, so this is a test job. Once it's saved, you'll have the opportunity to open the file. And here we go. So. If you want to incorporate Pierce Phelps' logo or a contractor's logo into the proposal and get real in-depth, you certainly could do that. You just change the picture here. If we plugged in any project information, it'd be listed on the cover page. We'll have a table of contents. We'll have an equipment takeoff, if you will. Your outdoor unit, your indoor units, your branch box, any controllers that were uh, incorporated. You'll have piping materials listed in here. You'll have that piping view for reference. You'll have your outdoor unit specs, much like you would get on your AHRI directory with a little bit more detailed, uh, more of a submittal look for your outdoor unit, as well as all of your indoor units. And again, you can label these uh, whatever you'd like at this point. If you had any ventilation, it would be listed as well. And residentially speaking, that's about all you'd be looking to do there. Okay? So, you'll save this, you make any adjustments needed, and then you'll send this off to your contractor. Contractor then can incorporate his or her proposal uh, into this uh, proposal software or vice versa, and it makes for a nice professional finished uh, product that you can present then to a homeowner, engineer, building manager, what have you. And then jumping right back in, bear with me one second. So again, we talked about it. Any updates that are made to the system, which is usually on a bi-weekly basis, you can click on Update DSB when you're in the program. And other than that, if you have any questions going forward, please feel free to reach out to myself, James Miracle, my counterpart, Jeff France, or your local Pierce TM uh, and reference this uh, webinar at your leisure, and we can get you up and running on DSB uh, at any point in time. Thank you for your time, guys. Have a great day.